Welcome to Sew Very Easy. My name is Laura and a lot of colored fabrics do have white, black or gray built somewhere in that fabric. The black could be a background or the white can be a background. The black can actually be tracing some of the patterns which will emphasize the picture or the colors. The grays, blacks and white also help with the contrast and show true colors. So what will happen if we take the color out of the quilts and only use black, white, and gray? Well, I have a fabric line and a free pattern that will show you how stunning a black, white, and a gray quilt can really be. We have black, whites, and grays. Beautiful florals, beautiful paisleys, and some fun music notes. And this fabric is from Maywood Studios and it's called Nocturne. And the free pattern is a very stunning quilt and it looks like it's glowing from the center coming out. That glowing is done with a special fabric that is an ombre fabric. Ombre fabric is a plain fabric. The difference is the way it's printed. Instead of a design being printed on it, the fabric color changes. It starts dark and gradually goes lighter until it hits the center and then goes lighter back to dark. So we have the dark coming into the light of the center. And it's the way that this ombre fabric has been cut that gives it this shine. They are solid fabrics, it's just how it's cut. Now this pattern can be made in many different colors and you don't necessarily have to use this ombre fabric, but it really does give it a glow. And we're gonna cover how easy it is to cut and use this fabric. The first eight fabrics have a print. The ninth fabric is this ombre fabric. You can see the picture where it starts the dark and goes lighter into the center. The first thing we're going to do is cut this print fabric. And then after, we'll cut the ombre fabric. So following the directions of the cutting, we need to cut those first eight fabrics. And we're only going to need two sizes. We are going to need five inch squares cut and nine and five eighths inch squares cut. The smaller squares are labeled A's. So I have A1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. The larger ones, or the bigger squares, are B's. B1, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And you can always cut your binding out to have it ready. So following the directions, I have the appropriate squares that I need. The A squares need to have a line drawn from corner to corner along the back. And that's going to be a stitching line. All of those big squares needs to be cut in half once. Once we have all of the pieces cut, I would recommend that we put them together in units. Not sew them, just place them together. We will be making five different block sets. They're all going to be made the same way, but I'm going to lay them together first and then follow the directions. But I'd like them all together so I can visually see what I'm doing before I start the sewing. When we take a look at how the block is made, we're going to have that large ombre fabric, the large triangle stitched on with that smaller square stitched on after. And when it's trimmed down, we will have units that look like this. When they're sewn together, we end up with these V's. It will be a lot easier if we lay these fabrics out in these units. For example, block set three uses the piece A5, B6, and that is the ombre color but we're going to lay out the A's and B's together. So for example, for that block set number one, we're using the very large B2 in the A1. The A1 square will eventually be sewn on that corner on that line and be folded back. So I can take that A1 and just place it on top. Take all the block units and match up your B's and A's together. So I have that a1 and the B2 together, B4 with that A3, B6 with the A5, B8 with the A7, B1 
with A2. You will notice the same amount of triangles will be the same amount of squares. Having these stacked now is just going to save us time for stacking them later. It's going to be easier to match up our ombres with them. But now we get to cut the ombre fabric. To start with, we do need our fabric pressed and we're going to match up those selvages together. And both those dark edges run along that selvage, so the light edge is along the fold. We need to cut nine widths of fabric and they need to be at nine and five eighths. The first thing we need to do is straighten up the one edge. From here, we're going to be able to cut our nine and five eighths. I do not have a ruler that size, so I'm going to use a combination of two. I'll be using a six inch ruler and an eight and a half inch ruler, but you could use two six inch rulers. I'm going to place the rulers together as I cut. So I have six inches from the one ruler, so I will need three more inches plus that five eighths. And I like to put a little tape on the back of my ruler, and that way I don't always have to count. I do use a tape that's designed just to do this, and it's called glow line tape. It's a tape that will stick onto the back of your ruler and then come right back off and will not leave a residue on your ruler. So I've counted and found my 5 8 mark. So that tape is just helping me so I don't have to always count. I will still be able to use the bottom lines to straighten up that fold of the fabric. I have the straight edge on one side and I'm going to cut on the other side. And I need to cut nine strips this size. Once those nine strips have been cut, we're going to be able to cut these into squares. We're going to get four squares out of each strip. And we can cut the first three strips together. So open up the fabric and lay them together so the salvages match and the raw edges match. I'm going to use a smaller ruler just to demonstrate what we need to do when we cut this. The first cut, we want the darkest ends of each of those strips. From there, we need to cut two center squares. So we're going to find the center mark, cut one square and the other square. This is going to give us the lightest point in our squares and the darkest point in our squares. And the squares need to be cut the same width, which is nine and five eighths. When the squares are cut, we're going to have those two strips in the center that we won't be using. We're going to be able to label these. There's strips set C's, so we're going to have C darks and C lights. So this is the first three rows that we cut. We have the two dark and the two lights right in that center. We have six strips that need to be cut. The outside squares are going to be cut the same way, but this time we're going to leave the center blank. So the medium blocks are going to be as close as you can to the two edges. And those are going to be labeled the C mediums. When we finish cutting our nine strips, we will have a dark pile, a light pile, and a medium pile. From the medium pile, take out four blocks and put them aside. Those four blocks are going to be corner blocks. They will need to be trimmed down to eight and a half inches. We can trim them down now to eight and a half inches or put them aside and trim them after. I want to trim them after and that way I'll decide where I want my light and my dark after I lay the tire quilt together. All of these squares now need to be cut in half on the diagonal, but we want opposite sides. So we need to place them right sides together in pairs. We need to match those up so we have right sides together going in that same color scheme. So our darks are all together and the lights are together. I'm going to start on that light corner and cut into a dark corner. So I'm starting on a light side and I'm cutting into that darker corner. By cutting them right sides together, the triangles are going to match. So we have two dark together and two light together. And if you look closely at the pattern, you can see the different variations in the colors. I'm going to keep those piles cut and organized together. Cut the medium and cut the dark. Once all these ombre squares have been cut, we're going to be able to match them up with our units from the beginning. When we look at the diagram, we can see where we have the darks together and the lights together. So let's start with this first unit. 
I need the big B unit, the A unit, and those dark units. To match them up, I make sure that all of my fabric is right side up, so I have equal parts. The A squares are going to match up, and this is where the ombre fabric goes. I want to find the piece where I have that light in one corner, and those lights will match up. By laying these out before we sew them, it assures that we have the lights in the area we want them, in the darks where we want them. So the first thing we need to do is match the right sides together and stitch a quarter inch all the way down the long side. And I'm going to sew both of these edges together. These blocks now need to be trimmed down to eight and a half inches. To help keep myself organized, I'm always going to put my blocks back together in the same area that I want them to be in. My A1s now get to be stitched on each of the corners. I did draw that line from corner to corner, so I'm going to place it on top of that print and stitch right on top of that line. Once that line has been stitched, if we fold that piece back upon itself, we're going to notice that the square size did not change. We just replaced a corner with a different fabric. So we're going to be able to trim this corner off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. This basic square is what the entire quilt is made of. Other than the four corners, the entire quilt is made from this. The only thing we really need to take into consideration is where the light and the dark points are going to be. Other than that, the blocks are very simple. Once we put this block one together, we're going to be able to set up block two. And even though these blocks are very simple blocks to put together, I'm always going to lay them out together first. And that way I can always make sure where my lights and my darks are going to be. Simple blocks, but amazing results by using this ombre fabric. When all of the blocks are done, we're going to notice that block one and five are full units on their own. Blocks two, three, and four have additional pieces along with that finished unit. The quilt is going to be able to be put together in rows, and it will give you the placement of the blocks. That center row, we have block three, two, and one, one, two, and three. Each of the sides are going to be the same. So the block placements are the same going in this direction and going in this direction, all coming out from that center. We can now sew these together in rows. So let's put the center together and do that outside border after. So the ombre is always going to be pointing out and the pieced blocks are always going to be facing in and those lines will follow up as it's all done. When the center of the quilt is done, you really can notice those pieces joining up. We have one more row to put around the outside. We have block number four and block number five. Block five goes on each side of block four. So two rows on the top and the bottom. With the top and bottom on, we have left two sides. Before we stitch those sides on, we need to stitch the corners onto these side pieces. And those corner pieces need to be cut at eight and a half inches. Before I trim them, I can decide where those blocks are going to be and trim accordingly. So choose the look that you like and trim it down closest to that corner at eight and a half inches. And once those are trimmed down, you're going to be able to stitch them on each end of these long finishing rows. Then when you put those pieces together, you're going to have one continuous line on both sides finishing off the quilt. When the quilt top is all done and put together, you can see how that ombre fabric really adds a glow to the quilt. Now you can always use any fabric, but that ombre really does give it that difference. It does make it look like it's shining. And that black, white, and gray fabric really gives that quilt a big visual impact. I'll put a link in the description to the free pattern from Maywood Studios. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.